I hate gift giving and receiving. Receiving gifts is so weird. What do you say? Thank you. This is Coffee Convos with Kale Lowry and Lindsay Chrisley. I really want you to be in your feels, Kale. That does not interest me whatsoever. I feel very attacked by you. A spirited discussion about motherhood, friendship, family, and life in the public eye. I'm just not with the fakery anymore. There's a fakery bakery around here. <laughs> Here's Kale and Lindsay. This episode of Coffee Combos Podcast is brought to you by Lomi by Pila. Visit lomi.com slash coffee combos. Happy Thursday, everyone. Hi, Lindsay. Good morning and welcome to Coffee Combos Podcast. What are you doing? Um, I am really trying to stay awake. I've had copious amounts of coffee already today because Creed now has the flu and oh, no. Lincoln doesn't feel well. And so it's just like pure sick chaos in the Lowry house household. Um, Creed went to bed at 6.30 last night and couldn't keep his eyes open and then was up all night, like trying to fall asleep, going back to sleep, being up. And I ended up sleeping with him in Lux's bed because Creed is still in a crib. I know. Crucify me if you want. Um, but I just felt really bad, like putting him in a crib. So I slept with him in Lux's bed. Lux slept on the couch. Um, Lincoln has a sore throat. So he was in his bed, but he wanted me to tuck him in and lay with him. But I felt bad leaving Creed by himself because sometimes between all the congestion and the snot, and then if he wakes up crying and I'm not there and then he'll throw up and then he threw up before he went to bed. And so it was just like a, it was a clusterfuck. How are you? Um, that's a lot. Yeah. People instantly with overwhelmed. Lots of kids. When I hear stories about how like sickness has run through our house, I can relate if like I get sick and then Jackson gets sick. But I'm gonna be honest. I mean, find some wood to knock on. <laughs> um, normally, if he gets sick, I don't get what he has, and he doesn't get what I have. That's good. That's it's so weird. But you know what's crazy is all the and I know every don't believe everything you see on the internet. But the doctors that I follow on like TikTok and stuff, like the pediatricians I follow, they say like all those cold meds and things like that, they're all like a gimmick basically. And that like a spoonful of honey, obviously, if your child is old enough to have honey, does better than like all these cough medicines. Um, and to only really give your kids, I'm not a doctor, I'm just saying what I saw on the internet, um, Tylenol or Motrin, if they're like not acting themselves. So if they have a fever that's 103 and they're acting fine and still bouncing off the walls, like you don't necessarily have to give because the fever is the way of like fighting off the infection, right? So I was like, wow, that makes so much sense to me. Um, Wait, is this a new revelation for you? Yeah, I didn't know that because I, I allegedly, allegedly, <laughs> the <laughs> high fever thing um, is – you know, like the febrile seizures, oh, you have to take them to the ER if it's above 102, 103, is only in kids that have like um, other, I don't want to, what ailments, other other health diagnosis. conditions, diagnosis, um, neurological situation. So like in a normal child, and I say normal very lightly, um, like Creed doesn't have any other health conditions. He has no, you know, neurological issues, no, you know, nothing. So if he's fine bouncing off the walls with a 103 fever, don't I don't necessarily have to give him Tylenol. Okay. So I have gone off of that rule for forever. Um, oh. Jackson's pediatrician was my pediatrician. I don't know if I've talked about that before, but if I have, so obviously like Older, very old school believes in allowing the body to let the infection run its course mm -hmm. and kind of like heal itself. And so I've always gone off of that since I had Jackson. Like I don't even think we own cold medicine or like cough syrup or anything like that. Um, always like natural remedy has always been my go-to. And I only ever give Tylenol if he has a fever because I know that when you have a fever, nothing is worse than having a fever and like feeling that that like achy. Like lethargic, just like so uncomfortable. Yeah, it's so bad. So mm -hmm. I will give him Tylenol like for that. But outside of that, we just don't do other types of meds ever. Yeah, yeah no, I, I was – I guess not shocked. I guess it confirmed my beliefs anyway, but um, 
when we I love hear TikTok docs. Yeah. I mean, and they're like we're actual doctors. So that makes me feel better. Obviously, listen to your own pediatrician over TikTok. Um, but when I went and took them to the doctor, they pretty much said the same thing. Like you kind of have to let them run their course. Um, and anyway, so yeah, I'm hoping that he gets better soon because he's just not feeling well and neither is Lincoln. So, um, well, can I tell you what happened to me? And it's been going on for like a week. Oh no. What? Um, I need everyone to help me, honestly. Um, Does Georgia have diarrhea? No, thank God, because that's one thing that like I literally <laughs> couldn't deal with right now. <laughs> I hear you. Um, dog diarrhea is like next level shit, <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> and I cannot. But okay. So I have an ant problem at my house. Oh, no. And they're like those tiny – my nanny calls them piss ants, but I don't like really think that's the name of them. Um, They're just like these tiny little nuisances that are just like creeping around my house. And I kid you not, I will be sitting on the toilet and feel like an itchy on my leg. And I look down and it's an ant. Shut up. In the winter? Yes. I've heard of them in the spring and the summer because – um, like fruit is out and, you know, if you're eating in, I don't know, whatever, eating in the house, they come and I just thought they died off in the winter, to be honest, or hibernate or something. Okay. Well, these fuckers didn't die off. Um, it's been extremely wet in Atlanta for like almost two weeks. So I thought, well, maybe the water's bringing them because sometimes that will happen. Um, and then I told Jackson, I was like, maybe it's all the crumbs that you create to like, this is a specific time that you need to eat over your plate. Um, I'm walking around with Clorox wipes, cleaning off the floor, any crumbs off the counter that I can find. I also found them in my shower going to my sugar scrub. Interesting. I wonder if that would kill them. No, I think they're trying to eat it. Yeah, but wouldn't it kill them if they eat it? I hope it does. Yeah, that's a pain in the ass. Like just such a freaking pain in the ass. And here's another thing that happened to me. We were – Jackson, Will, and I – Jackson graduated his um, play therapy therapy last week, which I'm so happy for him and excited. Um, But we went – to that and then went to dinner to celebrate and came home. And one of my friends had sent me a box of donuts from Dunkin', like on Uber Eats or whatever it is. I was so excited about it. And I told Jackson, I was like, look, you got a whole box of donuts for the morning. I come in the kitchen and I open it up and literally ants were all over every one of them. What the fuck? Oh no. Was he so disappointed? Yeah, he was like, we literally can't eat those because they're, it's infested. Oh, uh, I just yeah, didn't know so they were I don't out know in the what winter. To do. I have tried. Okay, so I bought a can of Raid because I was like, I'll just blast the fuckers. And then that didn't really work. And they're still hanging around. Is it going to just be like a little bit of time until like I get every last one if I just like keep spraying the Raid or like what's going to help get them out? Um, those little, they have these like little packet things that you can set like on, like under your, um, what is it called? Like traps? Kind of. I think they're kind of like traps and you can put them under your like cabinets, like on the floor, or you can put them, you can put them in your, um, in your bathroom. They're, I guess they're kind of like traps. I guess they go in it and they don't come out. I don't know. Okay. This is another thing that I did. I sprayed my garbage bag, um, Like my trash can, it's kind of like a cabinet. So like you pull it out. I sprayed my entire garbage bag with Raid. So if they get in there, then instantly they'll die. Like I don't know what to do, but I'm losing sleep over this and I need everyone to like literally send me help. (laughs) Can we get an exterminator over there? Like I'm not, I'm not even kidding. Um, Outside of that, I need to tell you a story and I need to know if you have ever had like paranormal activity ever happen to you before. No, I have not. You haven't? mm Okay. So I woke up in the middle of the night. This was like last week. I told Kristen about this. 
I was so alarmed. I was like, Kristen, have has anything like this ever happened to you? Like, is someone pranking me? Like, is Ashton Kutcher going to pop out and be like, <laughs> you're on punk? Like, yes, immediately, yes. What's happening? So I wake up middle of the night. To me, it's middle of the night. It's probably like morning for some people, but 4.17 a.m., feel like I hear the doorbell ring. So I sit straight up in the bed and I'm like, oh my God, who would be here at 4.17 a.m.? No one's there. Mm. So I am in the shower and I feel like I hear the doorbell ring in the shower. Get out of the shower, walk to the door, nothing there. Happened one other time, nothing there. And I need to know, is that like someone who's like passed away trying to get my attention? Oh my God. And now my lights, I swear to you, just flickered. Did you hear that? Um, like I heard the charger go. Listen, you guys, hold on. Did you hear that? Yeah. Okay. Like I'm telling you, there's paranormal activity and something's going on. It's like that phantom, the the phantom baby crying when you don't actually, there's no baby there, but you swear you hear a baby crying. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. Why is this happening? Literally, I'm telling this story. What was that and static? I have hives right now, I think. Um, my entire lights just flickered all through the house. My power surged and my TV turned on static. I was wondering what that static was. Is it like someone that's dead, like trying to talk to me? I think it is someone. Yeah. I mean, I'm I could Google it. <laughs> like I'm literally not okay. I, I'm weirded out by it and I need to know if this has happened to anybody else. And if it did, like what it meant and what does it mean when you like phantom hear doorbell rings, but no one's there. Um, I just Googled it. Is it going to scare me? It says interference occurs when unwanted radio frequency signals disrupt your use of television. Um, the occurrence known in paranormal circles as electric voice phenomena or EVP is the basis for a new... F oh, that's just like... There's not really a whole lot of information on here. Okay. Well, we need to like... Call Ghostbusters? Call Ghostbusters, channel a medium, something, because I need answers because now I'm just like super, super freaked out. Yeah. I wouldn't want to stay home. <laughs> I wouldn't want to stay home if that was me. So... Kudos to you for her recording at home because I would not. I would be out the door so fucking fast. First of all, if you find out that I'm in a hotel tonight, mind your business. <laughs> I will absolutely mind my business, and but I will also know why. Kale, can I tell you something that I got out this morning? Yes, I'm ready. My Kara vitamins, and I absolutely love them so much. I swear it's a time saver. Honestly, not only is it a time saver though, I telling you the truth when I say that I texted Kristen and I was like, I honestly think that I feel so good these days because of my vitamins and my supplements. Like I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that. So if you guys have not heard of Care Of, Kale and I have been using Care Of for years at this point. Care Of is a subscription service that ships high quality personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders conveniently to your door every month. Um, and it truly does help you create um, and be able to stick to manageable self-care routines that you enjoy. And I think that it is really great if you're trying to achieve long-term positive change, Care Of is a great place to start. Agreed. I love Care Of. I've posted about them on my Instagram, my my Facebook, and we've talked about it on the podcast a hundred times. Um, so if you guys want to try this, you guys will get 50% off your first Care Of order. Go to TakeCareOf.com and enter our code COFFEE50. Again, that's 50% off your first Care Of order. Go to TakeCareOf.com and enter code COFFEE50. Well, I got my first Ipsy bag last week. It's a It's your first one. Yes. It was my first one. And I have to tell you how impressed I am. The little makeup bag that everything comes in is so cute. It's perfect for the car, on the go. You want to throw it in a diaper bag, whatever, and you want to put you know your essentials. I have a really bad habit of like taking makeup from my bathroom and taking it on the go with me and then not replacing it. So I just created a little car bag. And they had a Tatcha cleanser inside of it that I had never tried before. Okay, well, I got my bag too, but I've been ordering this for a while, so I didn't know that you weren't doing it, but I got an eyeshadow palette from Smashbox. Um, it, 
was like a beautiful blush in there from NARS and a mascara from Tarte. And I honestly would have probably never found these products on my own. And I just thank Ipsy so much for introducing me to so many different brands and different products. Yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled with what I got. It's an over $50 value, but you only pay $13 a month for Ipsy and you get five new products every month. You just have to go to ipsy.com slash coffee combos and take their short free beauty quiz ipsy.com slash coffee combos and they'll send you five products that are picked just for you from five different brands. You guys can up your beauty game the affordable way and go to ipsy.com slash coffee combos to join. That's ipsy.com slash coffee combos. Ipsy, the best kept secret in beauty. Completely unrelated, but also freaky and just strange and bizarre. Did you finish the Casey Anthony doc? I did. So the first two episodes, this is a, if you have not watched it already, it's a three part documentary docu-series situation. And um, the first two episodes really pissed me off because I didn't feel like there was any new information. Like I just felt like it was more about some like weird incestuous relationship between her and her attorney and like how they took her in and stuff like that. Um, The third episode really opened my eyes to Potentially, and I guess other people have felt this way all along. Um, in that George knew more than you know what he went on to get people to believe. Um, the other thing was that I watched this, um, it was like I guess like on court TV, I was like scrolling and it was a court TV, and, and it, it was professionals talking about her body language and how, um, it was very, very deceitful. Like the, her body language was, um, would lead them to believe that she's being deceitful. Mm -hmm. And they made a point that I, and I guess I missed it somewhere in the docuseries where George was holding Kaylee and she was cold and wet and lifeless. Um, why was she cold and wet and, and lifeless? Like where, what was the, what was, what happened to her that led her like that to be like that? And then Casey said that, um, George then took her away and said that she was going to be okay. Where was that information in the actual trial? Here's the thing. I feel like they've had so much time to concoct completely different stories, add to, take away, change narrative, that I am completely of the belief that this documentary was done for self-serving purposes only. Um, and for Casey to cast a net for people who believe that she did it to give some of those people doubt that George did. Outside of that, I don't think that the documentary, I think it was well done, but I hate the fact that I watched it because if it patted her pocket in any way, like that pisses me off. Um, I I rest on the fact that I believe that George had way more to do with it than we all knew. Yeah, I definitely didn't think that before um, because the last time I talked to you about it, um, I was like, Casey did it and you can't change my mind. And then lo and behold, I watched the third episode and I was like, wow, like George, there is definitely discrepancies in in George's stories and further in all of their stories there, the cop that was on there said that they've all lied to him at some point along the way. And so to me, I mean, George was an ex cop, right? Yeah. So he knows what a dead body smells like. He also knows how to, um, lie, manipulate and direct. Yep. Take control of the story, the narrative. Um, the thing that got me about George was his adamant – I don't even know if that's a word, adamant. Um, he was adamant that Casey did it um, on um, – off cam- was it on camera or off camera? Like basically two detectives. He was like, Casey did it. She's – you know, whatever. Why are you trying so hard to convince everybody that she did it to get her the death penalty when that's your daughter at the end of the day? Like if you don't truly know what happened, why would you – why are Blame. you gunning for that? Yeah. And then secondly, to your point, the last time we talked about this, you had said something about the animals, the way that George would 
wrap up the family animals when they passed away and bury them was very similar to the way that they disposed of Kaylee's body, which is really heartbreaking. And I'm not going to talk about what it was. Um, You guys can watch the documentary. But um, again, to your point, Casey could have seen George do it and then replicated that or it was George. I mean, I don't know. Um, And I do agree with your point again um, with the mom having some form of Stockholm syndrome because what the fuck? There's just something so strange about the mom that I can't put my finger finger on. on. Mm -hmm. Um, It's almost like just a person that has has existed in some form of abusive relationship for like a very, very long time and just – created coping mechanisms to stay existing in that. I think she's rather delusional. Um, and I don't know. It's just something about her body language, the the way she moves. I don't know. I, I can't put my finger on it, but it's definitely something. Yeah, it's, it's very strange. Um, and I also wish that I heard more from her brother. Um, Same. I, I didn't even know that – I mean, when we covered it – back way like months ago I remember you saying us saying that he had she had a brother um which I don't remember when I originally watched everything um but I still don't feel like we've heard enough especially from the the trial and her then blaming him for um SA trigger warning um you know sexually assaulting her after the dad um it just it the whole situation is very very weird um and the best friend that I still think is so bizarre. You say she's such a great mom. And then you said in the same exact sentence, but Casey did what she always does, which is lie. So I just feel like that that's still so weird to me. I will say again that a lot of her behaviors to me are very telling that it's likely that there was some type of sexual abuse that transpired in her childhood. The way she moves, the way she lies, the way she manipulates. I'm not saying that every person that's ever been sexually abused moves in that way, but I do think that there is extreme trauma that happened somewhere along the way that formed her to be who she is and the way that she – I just don't understand like some of the lies that she told and like why – that would have been a logical thing to her unless everything that she ever did was a lie. And my parents always told me growing up that the truth will set you free. When you lie, you have to tell another lie to cover up the first lie. And then like you just have to continue lying. And that's exactly what she did. Well, and then at that point, you don't remember where you first started the lies. And that was something that was said in the court TV um clip that I posted. I actually posted it in the Coffee Combos Facebook group. Um, They said that she contradicted so many things that she originally said in trial. She contradicted them in the docuseries. And Kristen actually just sent us a link right now, um, yourtango.com. And it says, Casey Anthony has been paid for sharing Kaylee's story in the past. While Peacock has not yet released details on whether Anthony was paid for the series, the now 36-year-old has been criticized for selling her story in the past. It says, um, in 2010, it was revealed during Anthony's trial that she had received $200,000 in licensing fees from ABC News. Um, The network paid for exclusive rights to photos and videos of Anthony, her family, and Kaylee. And then uh, um, allegedly she teamed up with the producer to pitch a $750,000 interview special in 2011. Um, Sternberg Sternberg was allegedly asking between $500,000 and $750,000 to deliver Anthony. However, the production never transpired. Um, So she's definitely made money off of this. So I would not be surprised if – because ABC paid her for – the rights to her story or whatever, but I wonder if that was up. And so then they were able to do the Peacock thing, which would make her more money because it was the first thing that she's ever spoken on directly in 11 years. The fact that it is very likely that you killed your daughter, very likely at this point, based off of other information that we have found out that your dad had some involvement and that you have basically used that horrible horrible thing to make a career out of essentially. Yep. 
I don't get it. I don't get it either. I'll never get it. I will never get it. Are the mom and the dad – are George and Cindy still married? Because I tried Googling that. Um, I just don't know. It, it feels very um, – like remember the John Bonet Ramsey case and the parents had two different attorneys and yep. they ended up I believe they stayed married until Patsy died, right? I don't know. I don't um, think I don't think so. Oh, they got divorced before she passed? I thought they were divorced because didn't we hear that like Natalie Holloway's I'm Googling it. I know people hate when we Google it, but we just – I never, I couldn't have predicted this information. It says, Patsy died of ovarian cancer in 2006 at age 49. After his wife's death, Ramsey met Beth Holloway, mother of missing Natalie Holloway. Okay. Well, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I was just thinking like there's so many similarities and I was just curious to know if that – because I know that um, Cindy and George didn't always see eye to eye. And because she has some form of Stockholm syndrome, I – well, I assume she does – um, I just wondered if they could potentially still be together today or did it completely implode I mean, their they marriage? were together in that documentary, but I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Um, maybe somebody can find out the answer and let us know. Um, I do have a question for you though. Okay. Completely unrelated to this. Um, this is also hypothetical, so I don't want anybody to, you know, go on, Reddit or Facebook or whatever and like be making up theories. So completely hypothetical. Would you have another child with your ex-husband post-divorce if neither of you were in other relationships and desired another child? Yes. Tell me more. <laughs> um, if we both wanted another child and we were already co-parenting for one child, I don't see why not. Like I don't see why we wouldn't do that. So my thoughts on this, and I had actually, I've had the conversation with two different people, not going to name them, but if I was, let's say 35 years old, not in a relationship, um, wanted another child, my heart desired that other person was not in a relationship, their heart desired that. I would sign up for that for multiple different reasons. One, um, genetics, knowing that I already have one child with that person, don't have kids with anybody else, that would be like a logical play to me. Mm -hmm. um, there's already an established schedule. So, you know, that child would just essentially fit into the fold. Mm -hmm. um, but here's other – question that I have. Okay. So let's say that you do this. You have get pregnant, have this baby with your ex-husband. What do you do when the child's an infant? I would say, unfortunately, like, unfortunately, the mom would probably take on most of the care, the caretaker responsibilities just because of if you choose to breastfeed or pump. Um, if not, I think it would be a little bit of a clusterfuck in the beginning because you want both parents to bond to the baby, you know, um, you know, as much as you can. So you'd probably either the baby would have to go back and forth, um, pretty frequently early on, um, until a routine is established is okay, my thought. And, and then is that also like the negative side of it is you're knowingly bringing a child into this world in already preset chaos. But is it preset if they're if the two are already getting along well enough to even consider the idea of having another baby together? Like is it that much of chaos for them and is it chaos at all if they don't know any different? If the See, routine is already working for said child um that they have together already and it's working, you're getting along, you're like, okay, this is working out so well that, you know, we both want another child. Why not? Let's just have one together and keep the same schedule. You know what I mean? Like, is that really chaos? I mean, it would be the, the norm for that child because they were being born into that and that would be all that they would know. Mm -hmm. So they would never know Any what different. the other child knew. Right. At one point. But... I'm like, could you imagine just having a baby with your ex-husband, like you just go bone and like get pregnant and then 
you're just like going to these doctor's appointments, probably like by yourself, doing all these things. Essentially, or maybe it's not. Like, maybe maybe homeboy will still go to the appointments. Well, then, okay, that poses the next question: Are you kind of together, or is that a situation ship, an entanglement? Like, what what is that? Because if you are solely looking at it as more of like business transactional um, donor type vibes then they wouldn't be doing all of those other things. That's almost like a relationship, but like not a relationship. Right. I think it probably would depend on the couple. Like, so Chloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson did this. And then allegedly um, Kylie and Travis did this. Um, Wait, what? Yeah. They, they claimed that they were not together and they were just like um, co-parents for Stormy and the new baby. I mean, I think it's gone back and forth. I more for Kylie and Travis is like they're together, they're not together, they're just co-parenting, they're just, you know, whatever. But yeah, that that's been in at least what I from what I've seen. See, why is life so confusing? And then um Travis and Chloe did it, and I think it just depends on the couple and like you what mean Tristan you and Chloe? What did I say? Travis and Chloe? Yeah. <laughs> Tristan and Chloe. Um, I think it just depends. Like I don't think it would be a bad idea, um, you know, if the right if the circumstances were right. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm doing it. I'm just saying I think it's an interesting thing to talk about and also just like stress people out when they're listening to this. So you just like to stress people out. <laughs> I love a good stress moment. Everly well. Okay. I downloaded the app finally to um Everly well, because I was just checking on their website. They do have an app. And I just actually sent in my metabolism test. It's in transit. Um, They just picked it up the other day. So I'm really excited to get my results on that. Um, But it is the holiday season. So there's no truer way to say I love you than by taking care of each other. And that's why Lindsay and I are suggesting that you guys prioritize your loved one's health and get them an Everly well test. You guys, this is so amazing. I think this would be a great gift and you have so many different options to choose from. So you can find 30 plus at-home lab tests, vitamin supplements, and more for everyone on your holiday list. Kale and I have taken so many of these tests. I'm interested to see what your metabolism test says um, on your results, but we've done food sensitivity, the women's health, um, they have men's health, um, and also have vitamins and supplements. It's absolutely amazing, super easy. Um, Everly Well is digital healthcare designed for you with personalized results and accessible tools for long term health. And it's easy, like Kale was saying, it just ships straight to you or your loved one, and everything that you need is going to be in that package. Um, if you order an at home lab test, this sample can simply just be collected at home and then shipped back to the certified lab in the prepaid envelope included with the test. And then you're going to get digital physician reviewed results and they're going to be sent straight to your preferred device in just days. Um, and if you order vitamins and supplements, you can start adding them to your daily routine right away. So simple. Over 1 million people have trusted Everly Well to support their health and wellness goals, including Kale and myself. And now you can help your loved ones do the same. The gift of health has never been so easy to share than it is this holiday. For listeners of our show, Everly Well is offering a discount of 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash combos. That's everlywell.com slash combos for 20% off your next at-home lab test. Everlywell.com slash combos. Oh, geez. Sorry, guys. Um, I don't know what's actually happening. It it legitimately sounds like there is a race car that is in my backyard. So oh, good. Okay. I don't know what's going on there. I was trying to pull up this article. I saw it on Fox News. Um, the article's on Fox Business, and I'll post it. But it was about this Home Depot worker that died. Um it says Home Depot says it continues to fight crime on all fronts after elderly worker died. Did you see this? I did not see this. I have not heard. This is the first time I've heard of it. Okay. So Home Depot says it's outraged that an elderly worker had died after being shoved during a store theft in North Carolina this fall. However, the world's largest home improvement retailer said it continues to fight crime on all fronts. This man was 83 years old. 
He died on December 1st due to complications from injuries that he sustained when a suspect allegedly shoved him while stealing pressure washers in October. Security video released showed how the elderly employee had approached the alleged oh. shoplifter while he was trying to leave the store with stolen items. However, the suspect shoved the man out of the way, fled, according to the footage. Um, medical examiner ruled his death was a homicide, um, and the company has deferred to comment on anything pertaining to the incident to local authorities, but said safety of its associates and customers is a number one concern. So I pulled up the article while you were reading it. That's what the sound was. Um, it was like a little pop up on this website and there's an actual photo of the guy pushing the elderly man and it's a literal one handed push. Um, that makes me so sad. Like this guy was probably just like trying to pay a bill or two and socialize with other human beings at 80 something years old and getting shoved by this fucking criminal pisses me off. That makes me so sad. I mean, not that it would make it any better that it was a other aged person. Right, 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 right. However, I mean, that is probably so true. He's probably just like a lot of times when people get older, like in their 70s, 80s, they'll take jobs, you know, doing this because they get to socialize with people. They get to meet people. Um, I actually think Home Depot pays pretty well. Um, but to see that this man died over three Ryobi pressure washers pisses me off. Yeah, that really is so – that's so fucking sad. That is so sad. I'm not well. Um, um, we have some something face- from the Facebook group. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a little long, so I'm going to read it. And then we will – give our take, which no one probably really gives a fuck. Um, (laughs) This is going to be long, but I'm desperate. My husband made comments here and there about himself being small. Apparently his ex-wife said it before. I've never said it or even thought it. Well, after a few too many cocktails, he tells me he's going to get injections to make it thicker. Good for him. No. Okay. (laughs) I was flabbergasted and upset that he felt that he had to do that. He was badgering me, asking me if I can tell a difference from my ex who was 10 years ago. Like, what the fuck? I don't even think about him or want anything to do with that person. After 20 plus minutes of him telling me that I'm being nice, how my lady bits have changed over, have changed. It's tighter now. I tried explaining how my body works, but I'm also a hundred pounds heavier and have pushed out two humans. So maybe stuff changed, but not because of him. I don't have to lie and him constantly interrupting me. I said, out of flustered frustration, my ex was long ago, so if you're trying to change thickness to achieve what you think I want, then know the facts. Well, it hit the fan after. I'm so anxious. We fight. He said it's always been um, something that he's insecure and secure about, and now I confirmed it. He cries. He shut down and uncomfortable. I feel like I was being badgered and pushed, and he says it now. He knows that he's going to change it and ho- and change it or hopefully I forget. It's changed our dynamic massively. I don't know what to do. There has been gaslight. There has been gaslighting blame put on me, but I call it out real quick. Any advice is so appreciated. I love that it says, do not be judgy bitches. (laughs) I feel like if he is insecure about it and he wants to make it thicker, let him make it thicker. I mean, um, I have an ex who was extremely small. Um, very, very, very small. And, you know, Kel, did you feel like you really needed to like emphasize <laughs> small by being like very, very, very small? No, I shouldn't have done that. That's awful. That's horrible. I, <laughs> that you is horrible. told me one time that it was not even the size of your pinky. I think it, it's about the size of my pinky. Okay. That's not working. So I understand. I I can relate to this if he, I mean, she says my husband, hold on, about himself being small. Okay. But she's never said it. So on one hand, you have, you know, him being insecure about something on his body. Then maybe I say good for him. He wants to change it. He wants to make himself feel better. Great for him. I think she should just support him. and, And she could have just said, hey, like, I don't think you're small. I've never said you were small, but if that's how you're feeling, then I'm I 100% support you going to, you know, make those changes. That's okay. how I feel. But 
I'm – okay. I got a couple things to say. Okay. One, why does any ex in this situation matter? That drives me nuts because if she was interested in that ex, then she would either be with that person or it would have come up in their relationship before about how she liked his dick better than his. That's savage. That is so savage. If someone says that in a relationship that they're in and they're like, my ex had a better dick than you, like that's horrible. Well, I'm sure it happens all the time. I'm sure it does. You're right. I'm sure it does. But she's saying in here that she's never said that. And after too many cocktails, he's telling me he's going to get injections to make it thicker, blah, blah, blah. I think the bottom line is they should not be fighting about this. There's nothing to fight about. It's like, I'm satisfied with your penis. If you're not satisfied, I support you in in making those changes, period. End of discussion. Okay. But then this leads to a whole other conversation because I need to know if you like a man who is like overly confident in himself, a man who is confident, but he doesn't like play confident. He's just like a confident person. Mm Mm-hmm. Or do you like someone that is a little insecure? I think I like the middle version that you just described where they're like confident, but they don't act like they're confident. I like that. Um, I think that that's probably preferred for for most. Um, overconfidence is definitely a turn off, turn off for me because I'm like, if you're that confident, then why do you need me here? Because like you have everything that you need. And you really don't need a grandmother because you pat your own back all the time. So you don't need me or her. Um, So I I don't like an overly confident person. I want someone to be confident in themselves because I think that's super healthy. Um, But I don't like insecure either. So Kristen just messaged and she said that the woman is basically saying that the length is the issue after he was pushing her. So – I got it wrong, I guess, when she was saying, like, know the facts, like, know what you're saying. Um, He's worried about the thickness where she was saying (laughs) her ex was was long. So if you're trying to change the thickness to achieve what you think I want, then know the facts. So her ex was longer. um, And that's what has changed the dynamic. Okay, well, it shouldn't really have gotten to that point. Um, but he really shouldn't have brought up her ex in the first place. So I feel like – First of all, any time that you are in a sexual relationship and you've made it that far in a relationship with someone else, you automatically should know. And if you don't, this is a public service announcement and you need to know. You don't need to be having conversations about your ex's coochie, dick, whatever, whatever it is that you're out there doing. You don't need to be having conversations about exes. That is a recipe for a fight and a recipe for insecurities, um, period. Whether whether it be – you're not going to make someone else feel more confident in a current relationship by downplaying what you had before because they're probably going to be like, oh, they're just trying to make me feel better and they're still going to be insecure. And you definitely don't need to be telling your current partner that your ex was so much better. Right, 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 right. Like that's just not – that shouldn't come up. But then that – now that you say that, um, do you think that length matters or girth? I prefer girth um, over length. But I do think that at some – I mean it just – I guess it depends on the person because it it matters a little bit but not like – Tell me more. (laughs) Like the length matters a little bit because you want to get all the spots, but I feel like it's not the end all be all. Yeah. But if the length isn't hitting the spots, then it's irrelevant. Right, right, right. Of course. Of course. Okay. Here's another one. Curve or no curve? That I don't know because I've never had someone with a curve. Wait, what? I don't, I've never been with anyone that has like a curve, like a significant curve at all. So they're just like straight. Yes. So they just poke out, mm-hmm. not up or down, no, or to the side. Mm-mm. Hmm. Interesting. So now that we have, um, we know all of your exes. We now know that <laughs> none of them have a curve. Good. For, I, hate, I hate myself so much. I hate good, myself. 
good for them. Um, I, I will say I think that um, it needs to be like thick enough but like not too thick. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that measurement would be. Um, and if it's too big, no. Um, if it's too small, no. I think I'm just like a middle of the rotor for everything. I'm like – I like a person that's confident, that's not talking about their confidence. And then I just like, uh, like middle of the road. Okay. Yeah. I, I agree. No, you don't liar. You like it big. (laughs) Like you're such a liar about that. Um, I, I think medium (laughs) kill you are a liar because listen, I have seen photos of stuff. The ones that you like are not medium. Mm, and if they okay. are, then the ones I like are small. I, you hear me? I'm, I was trying to come up with a comeback and I couldn't. So I have a lot of kids. That's no secret. And so trash really piles up at my house. A lot of There's a lot of food waste and I've never really been able to compost before. It's always been a little too complicated or too much work with the chaos in my home. But then I got a Lomi recently and I really love it. It allows us to turn our food scraps into dirt and push at, literally with a, with the push of a button. Lomi is a countertop electric composter that turns scraps into dirt in under four hours. My kids love doing this. So um, it's been kind of fun. Let me tell you, you told me about this. So I got one and I've been using it. I was worried at first that there was going to be a smell, but there is no smell when it runs and it truly is really quiet. I have noticed that I have way less garbage um, and that means it's not going to landfills and producing methane. Instead, um, we're just turning our waste into nutrient-rich dirt that you can feed to your plants. And if you guys want to start making a positive environmental impact or just make cleanup after dinner that much easier, Lomi is perfect for you. Head to Lomi.com slash coffee combos and use promo code coffee combos to get $50 off your Lomi. That's $50 off when you head to L-O-M-I.com slash coffee combos and use promo code coffee combos at checkout. Food waste is gross. Lomi is your solution. With the holidays just around the corner, Lomi will make the perfect gift for someone on your shopping list. Um, While we're on this topic, I saw this TikTok and I need your take on it. Um, We can share the TikTok, but it is titled Friends with Benefits and Situationships. Mm -hmm. Um, Situationships, formerly known as Friends with Benefits, which by the way, you end up with neither neither a friend or any benefits because at the very end, it's time loss, focus loss, but situationships are supposed to be an entanglement between two people. That is supposed to be drama-free, casual sex. There's no destination, no goals, no feelings. Well, let me tell you, drama is just beginning. It's the most toxic form of relationship. If you want to call it a relationship, you're better off, in my opinion, having sex with a complete stranger on a one-night stand and have your fun whatever it is that you're into, then drag along a person in hopes that you get them um, over you get them over you or more attached to you. One person's going to get attached while the other gets detached. It may start as just casual sex, but we're human. There's emotions involved in the process of losing a friend, losing focus, keeping each other from meeting other people. Yep. What are your thoughts? Um, I, I agree with this. I think that um, I've tried – a friends with benefits situation and I end up with two kids with this man. So, um, and I, I, I don't, I personally don't think that friends with benefits, I mean, I don't know, maybe now in my life I could probably do it. And I, because I just, no, I don't think I could because one person, they're going to get attached to me and I won't be, get attached to them at all. Kale, you, you have been attached to one person. I know that you were in a friends with benefits situation. Yeah, but I'm saying now if I was to do it, oh, they yeah. would be attached to me and I wouldn't be attached to them Yeah, based would- on what happened to me the last time. And I was so in love and just – I you couldn't tell me shit and you – as you know um, – I agree with this person. It just, it may start as casual sex, but one person is going to end up falling for the other. Um, And that's never, I'd rather keep my friendship and just have a casual hookup if that's what I was looking for. 
Um, I would need some training on that because I've told y'all in the past, (laughs) I don't know how to go from point A to point B, like if I were to like go out and meet somebody, but so I would need some coaching on that, maybe like a wing woman. Uh, But yeah, no, friends with benefits is not it for me. Okay. So tell me this, if you have been in a relationship with someone Mm -hmm. and then you guys break up Mm -hmm. and then like time passes and then you try to do friends with benefits, do you feel like that's going to work or it's going to end up toxic? No, it's going to end up toxic. Okay. Are you saying it's going to end up toxic because you've done it? Yes. (laughs) Okay. Do you think it's going to end up toxic? Shut up, Kale. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. It it definitely ends up toxic every single time because here's the thing. Whether it starts friends with benefits, there there's a reason why you two are sexually engaging and it's because one person might not have feelings, but they're in it just for the physical attachment with that person. Mm-hmm. The other person is going to be the person that does have emotions invested So it's just going to end up toxic. But if you are a person that's been in a relationship with someone, you break up, and then you think you're going to be friends with benefits, I am here to tell you that that's absolutely not what it's going to be. You're going to be enemies with benefits that Mm -hmm. um, is just going to turn into an absolute fucking disaster because all of that relationship stuff that you had at one point is not going to be erased because time passed. Right. It's And it's going to bring up – feelings. It's going to bring up old feelings, old fights, old arguments, old whatever, like wholeheartedly agree with that. And I do believe that when you find yourself in situations like that, um, in an entanglement, you do lose focus. Um, and maybe this is like more acceptable and I would be like, okay, this, this would fly if you're like in your twenties or something at my age now. Absolutely not because I'm not trying to be entangled with somebody that I have no destination, no goals, no feelings, loss of focus, um, and also you're wasting my time because I could be meeting like Mr. Perfect. Yeah, no. I agree with you. That's what. Nope. That's specifically what's not going to happen. I'm specifically not wasting my time on that moving forward in my life. So um, we need to talk about Jonah Hill's documentary. Okay. I tried I did try when you told me about it. I tried to watch it and I just I'm gonna give it a second try. Um, because I've noticed that like sometimes when I try to watch something and I'm not interested, it's mainly because of my surroundings. Like either my kids keep talking to me or my, you know, my animals, whatever the case may be. So I'm gonna try to give it a second um go, but I could not I was like eleven minutes in and I texted Lindsay last night and I was like, I can't do this. Like I can't watch this. Um, did you get through the whole thing? I actually did watch the entire thing um, and I have a bit to say about it. Um, it's called stu- Stuts. Stuts. Yeah, Stuts. I think that's how you say it. Um, but this documentary um, was Jonah Hill directing and interviewing Phil Stutz. Um, he is a world-leading psychiatrist. Um, helped countless patients over 40 years, um, including world-class creatives and business leaders. Um, He was very interesting, um, and I did get some good information. Um, I do think that their dynamic was very interesting because they very much have a personal – have built a personal relationship and friendship – outside of what I feel like is a normal therapy situation. I do feel like you um, inevitably when you're sharing so much about your life with another person um, and they're constant, that there is going to be some form of relationship built. But in the way that I watched on this documentary, not not as much. Mm -hmm. Um, I had seen something on Instagram and it was watchers of the documentary weighing in on the importance of the film. And um, this is a quote. I just watched Stutz, Jonah Hill's new movie on Netflix and I learned more about mental health in 90 minutes than I did with six years of reading self-help books and going to various therapists. So that's what originally like struck my interest in watching it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think that this – 
man gave great insight on a lot of different aspects of the therapeutic process. Um, Jonah was saying that basically it was very helpful through the therapy process that he gave um, or required like an action um, to to give a tool to change your experience, to change your mood, um, putting big ideas on note cards. Um, he talked about um, your life force and how you have relationships with your body, um, relationships with other people, and then relationships with yourself. And um, he was talking about with the relationship with yourself, how therapeutic it is to to write. And I know that you've talked about that before. Um, so I thought that that was very interesting. Um, and he, he just talked about so, so much goodness, but I feel like it was definitely, um, targeted at a specific audience. Um, you either need to have, been through therapy to understand some of the stuff or have an interest in the therapeutic process for it to make sense. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I definitely agree with that. Um, But I wonder how that woman that, well, I guess she said that she tried therapy and self-help books. So that makes sense. But yeah, so maybe for people that have not kind of been to therapy or experienced any of that, they couldn't relate is what you're saying? I think that it gives good information, but I almost feel like because it's so high level that it's kind of hard to follow. Okay. So so then maybe not necessarily raising awareness then because if the people the only people that can take away something are people that have been to therapy or experienced something like this, they're the only ones that can relate. The people that haven't can't relate. I would love to know anybody who has watched this documentary what your thoughts were on it. Um, I took a lot of notes on it and I plan to put that together and post it on the Instagram um, just because it's a lot to to go through and cover on here. And I don't know how much interest that people would actually be interested in hearing about it. So I'm going to put it together and put it over there. Um, outside of that, I also saw a quote that made me think of you. And I want you to know, I want you to tell me how you feel about it. Okay. Um, it said people who were raised on love see shit differently from people raised on survival. I saved that from a TikTok that I saw and I so agree with that. And it's really hard because people who were raised on love will never understand someone who was raised on survival. Um, and people who were raised on survival are, they don't understand people who were raised on love. Like it's just so, that's so crazy that you saved that because I literally, I might have even sent it to Kristen, that TikTok that I saw. I mean, I don't know if, it, if that's where you got it from, but that's, I had just seen it probably the other day. I was like, that's kill. Yeah. Right about now, seasonal excitement or dread is really starting to settle in. I think it's dread for me, excitement for Lindsay, <laughs> but especially for small businesses. So slaying through traffic to the post office is a literal hassle. I actually needed to send something to Kristen and I didn't even want to do that. So inbox more like a blizzard than a winter wonderland rushing out to send cards and gifts to loyal clients whatever that is for your business it's not too late to get your holiday mailing and shipping under control and you can do that with stamps.com if you sign up now you'll be printing your own postage in literal minutes stamps.com is going to be your one-stop shop for all your shipping and mailing needs and for more than 20 years stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses it is true a stress-free solution for every small business. And this holiday season, you can trade late nights for silent nights and get started with stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code coffee for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale, no long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page and enter code coffee. It's always around now that we start thinking about what next year will bring. We make New Year's resolutions to work out more, but let's face it, they rarely stick. Well, Peloton's got a gift for you. Get up to $200 off accessories like cycling shoes, heart rate monitors, and more when you purchase a Peloton bike, Bike Plus, or Tread, and up to $100 off accessories with the purchase of a Peloton guide to take your workout to the next level. Make this first step toward achieving your fitness goals in the new year 
And once you start, you'll know why so many people choose to stick with Peloton. With a variety of workouts from cycling to scenic runs, boot camps to power walks, you'll find classes that work for you taught by world-class instructors who know exactly how to get the best out of you. So don't wait, get this offer before it ends on December 25th. Visit onepeloton.com. All access membership separate offer ends December 25th. Cannot be combined with other offers. See additional terms at onepeloton.com. We have one more question from the Facebook group and then we're going to do foul play. Um, This person asks, what does everyone make for their Christmas meal? We usually do a big meal, but with everything costing so much this year, there's only six of us at this Christmas. We always have way too much food and never eat it all looking for suggest, looking for suggestions for something new. Um, okay. So I know that you probably don't do it, but I always celebrated Christmas with Will's family like every year since we've been together And we always do more of what I would consider like a traditional Christmas meal, um, where we do like, um, pork or, um, beef tenderloin and then like rolls and Southern sides, like asparagus casserole, macaroni and cheese, um, green beans, like stuff like that. So it is more traditional. Um, My parents, however, Christmas Eve, we always, with Julie's parents, did Christmas Eve with them and always like finger foods. And that's nice because you can kind of like put it up and have it later or again. Um, That's like my favorite is to do finger foods or like appetizer style. That's my absolute favorite. Um, and then I don't know what we eat on Christmas. Honestly, I need to ask my nanny. I don't know. I've never had a Christmas meal in my life. What do you mean? Like even when my family was together, like my extended family, when I was a kid, um, we would go over to my great grandmother, her house, my Nana. Um, but there was no meal. I have heard of people doing like, um, I don't even know if there was food. Was there food? I don't think there was food there on, on Christmas morning. We would go every Christmas morning. We would, it was at noon. Um, we'd go to my Nana's house and we would just exchange gifts, you know, the aunts, the uncles, cousins, whatever. I mean, I was the youngest, but, um, there was no meal. Like we didn't eat like a lunch or anything. I don't even, maybe, maybe there was a lunch, like a finger food situation, but nothing that I remember. I never remember ever having a Christmas dinner in my entire life. Okay, so here's a couple of ideas that I think would be good ones. Um, Boston Market? Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) You could go to Boston Market. You could go to Cracker Barrel. Um, I think a good idea would be to do like a lasagna or like something like that, spaghetti, um, hors d'oeuvres, or you could order pizza. Um, I don't know. I feel like – so many people Big get ziti. wrapped up in having to have like to carry on the tradition. And as much as I agree with that to some extent, I've kind of like gotten out of that mindset. And it's like whatever I want to do for that year is what I'm going to do for that year. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I think we've had chicken and dumplings before on Thanksgiving. I mean on Christmas. Um, yeah. I don't really know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't have any ideas because I've never done. I mean, I, if it was me, I'd want, I would want a mini version of a Thanksgiving dinner. But that's just me. I'll probably never do that. But if I were to have a, th- a Christmas dinner, that's what it would be. Wait, Kristen, tell us what is a Christmas meal? She eats like I want to say ribs. Okay, <laughs> so. Kristen says that the night before Christmas, a.k.a. Christmas Eve, they do a pasta bar and there's no meat involved. And then they do prime rib, mashed potatoes, broccoli with cheese sauce. So very similar to what Will's family did. Yeah. So I don't know. If anybody has any ideas, please let us know because evidently we don't have any. Um, (laughs) Foul play. Let's fucking go. All right. 
Well, foul play. Hi there. First of all, I love your podcast. Can't get enough of it, but I have a foul play story for you. Unfortunately, it's not about shit, but it's still a good one. So I've been a hairstylist for six years and my first job I worked at was Smart Style, the salons inside Walmart in Hunting Hunting Don, PA. Before I start the story, I have to say this so you can understand. In Huntington, we have a bunch of pizza shops called OIP, and they are known for their subs and hoagies. Also known to put the fuck lots. is a hoagie? It's like a sub. Okay. <laughs> Also known to put lots of onion on their hoagies. Now onto the story. One of my coworkers, also my best friend, got a client in the shampoo bowl. And before my coworker started washing her hair, the client stops and says, I'm so sorry if I stink, but I've had an ingrown hair on my armpit for a few weeks and I haven't been able to put deodorant on and it smells worse than an OIP hoagie with extra onion. My coworker and I were mortified and dying laughing at the same time. I will never forget. First oh, of all, my God. This is like one of my biggest fears, like to have bad breath or body odor or something stuck in my teeth or to lose my teeth. Okay, I just listed a <laughs> lot of fucking things. But like, like I only have one fear and then you list a hundred. Yeah. Um, this okay. is terrifying. So, but here's the thing. If that's the case for me, um, I'm not going to go get my hair done until I figure out my armpit situation um, because that's not – I've had an ingrown hair on my armpit for a few weeks and I haven't been able to put deodorant on. Okay. I thought she was going to say, and I haven't been able to get into the dermatologist. Either way, she hasn't gone to the dermatologist and she also has not put on deodorant. I feel like you should subject someone that you definitely know and are close with so that you don't smell like an OIP hoagie with extra onions <laughs> to people that you don't know and maybe have them get a tweezer to your ingrown hair to get it out so then you can actually wash your pits, put on deodorant, and then I have solved every problem that you allegedly have. Um, at the point that you know that you – stink like a hoagie with extra onions at the hair salon, that was your notice to not go. Well, also I'm I'm guessing that the ingrown hair is to a point where somebody that she knows can't just pull it out. Okay. Because then you need to make an appointment. Yeah. At the Derm or at Urgent European care. Wax Center, Brazilian <laughs> Wax Center, whatever the hell it's called. Go in, get that situation fixed before you're worried about the hair on top of your head. Because I can assure you, your hair on top of your head isn't going to matter if you smell like a hoagie with extra onions. Facts. I agree with you. Love that. Next. Okay. Hey, guys. Love the pod and thought I'd throw this humiliating gem out there. When I was a teenager, I had plenty of sex in my parents' home. Oh, shit. Definitely not with their knowledge. I have always been serious about safe safe sex, so condoms were always in the mix. Afterwards, I would always make sure there was no evidence left behind by taking care of the wrapper and making sure nothing was visible in the bathroom trash. I always assumed that those used condoms were wrapped in toilet paper and buried deep. What That's what a reasonable person would do, right? No, a reasonable person is not – okay, keep going. <laughs> Years later, my parents were having their septic and leech <sighs> field redone by a close friend of my parents who has an, an excavating business. I already know where this is going. Mm -hmm. While digging up the yard, dozens of condoms started coming up to the surface, exposing years of my sexual encounters. Apparently, every dude I was ever with in my parents' home flushed the condom down the toilet. My dad was mortified that not only – was his side yard filled with years of used condoms that they were used. Oh my God. That they were used on his only daughter. But one of his best friends was also there to bear witness. And just for good measure, he was mortified one once more to have to tell me this happened. As you can imagine, I was more than a little embarrassed. So if you didn't know, now you know. Do not flush condoms. Love you both. And Kristen, happy holidays. First wow. of all, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. I'm appalled. <laughs> What's reasonable is that we aren't having sex in our parents' house because I can tell you right now, if any person, any of my siblings or myself ever had sex under Todd Chrisley's roof and he found condoms, goodbye. Like, I can, absolutely not. 
we're literally dead. Like he's sending us somewhere for help. Um, and he's also going to go and get help. But like <laughs> the safest thing would have been to just like not be having sex. I'm really glad that you um, safely had sex and used condoms. This is absolutely mortifying and I kind of want to know roughly how many condoms were found. It's a, I think she said dozens, right? Dozens. So there's 12 in a dozen and there's several dozens. Okay. Well, are we talking like three dozen or six dozen? Like I need to know the amounts of dozens that were going on. <laughs> also um, – Wait, but I wonder why they came up in the yard because I've had – I also have septic tanks in all the houses that I've lived in and they just suck it all up in their like hose and then it goes into the truck. Like I've never seen remnants around. Well, I don't know unless they had a septic issue. Right. Okay. That's true. You know, like mm -hmm. maybe you're not having septic issues. Also, how did you safely have dozens of times sexual encounters in your parents' home and also not get caught? Well, for one, if she got home after school and the parents didn't get home till five or six, there's an opportunity. Um, if her parents are, are deep sleepers in the middle of the night is an opportunity. Um, or you do it right under their nose while your parents is home and then they don't, they don't suspect anything because they're home. They're like, oh my God, nothing's going to go on. Wait, were you having sex in Susie's house? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I was having sex at my boyfriend's house. <laughs> and in the car. Also in the car. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we love that. We love that so much. Okay. Well, Anybody out here that is having sex in their parents' home, that's something that I don't even know would be like okay for me to do if I was legitimately married and just like staying with my parents. Like I'm mortified. Like I already – I'm turning red. Um, so for that, I'm going to go and work on my paranormal activity that's been going on in this house. I'm, I, see, I literally see ants crawling on my floor right now, so I'm going to get the raid out for that. Um I hope that you guys don't have any of the same problems that I'm currently having. Um, and I hope that you guys have great sex this week. And <laughs> I love you so much. And if you have not subscribed to us, do that on the Purple Podcast app. You can find us on Spotify, pretty much any other podcast app, anywhere you want to listen. And always first at Podcast One. Hope you guys have a great week and we'll talk to you soon. See ya. Hi, this is Jillian. Those of us here at Core Junkie have a new podcast called Civil, where we dive into fascinating civil cases, like in the case of a principal who took it upon himself to hypnotize students as a hobby. Then many of those students ended up dead. Or when a man was publicly and wrongfully accused of being the I-10 freeway shooter. We'll also be covering popular civil cases you've likely heard of, like O.J. Simpson and Alex Jones versus the parents of Sandy Hook. This is, this is AC. I have O.J. in the car. Sandy Hook, it's got inside job written all over. Hosted by me, Jillian Jalali, researched by Nicole Gusmarati, and written by Matt Stroud and Nick Kepler. If you like following criminal trials like I do, I think you will love Civil. Subscribe to us now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.